Okay, so the next superset we're going to do works with glutes and hamstrings a lot more than what we have done. So it's specific for that tie-in area, which a lot of people fail to uh, get. So what we're going to do is a lion leg curl, and we'll do a double squeeze on that, so you get a contraction, and then a short rep and another contraction. Um, and then we're going to do the glute machine, which really does target your glute and ham tie in the top part of your leg and where your butt comes in. So a lot of girls, especially in bikini, are judged on their glutes is a big part of it. So we're doing this today, so the sort of thing Georgia works a lot. She's not used to one of these machines, so I'll be stronger than her. Um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But how would you breathe on this? How would you? Is there any tips you can tell people? So people always hold their breath, do it that wrong, that kind of thing. Like, you see people turning purple in the gym, it's never a good look. Um, <laughs> it's just really important that as you're contracting the muscle, you breathe in. So suck the area in, hold it in your core, so tighten up, make sure you're holding everything tight through here as well. Don't lose your form through your abs and your sort of, um, core area. Because you're breathing out, everything starts hanging out, and that's not a good look. So make sure that everything's contracted, not just the muscle that you're working on. People forget that a lot, you see people with really bad form. So make sure you're breathing in through the contraction and exhale and release on the damage. All right, so let's do this in action. Okay, so as you can see, George is doing the leg curl, and we're doing a one and a quarter rep. So you do a full contraction, and then a short rep, so you get two bites on the hamstring. Big mistake people here make is they just move way up and back down without any control. So this makes sure that the hamstrings are contracting every rep. So another huge mistake people make on this is their hips raise up. So as they bring the bar up, they bring their hips up, which makes it a lot easier for you to get the weight up. But it takes a lot of the strain off your hamstrings and you use your lower back, so it can cause backache, which obviously is a problem. But we're here to focus on training the hamstrings and therefore you need to keep your hips glued to the pad. So feel like you're pushing your hips into the pad as you bring your heels up. But Georgia's form is very good on this.
by females that want to change their shape and they're stuck to the cardio machines and that's all they tend to do. They don't get the shape and the body tone they want and the fat doesn't remove from them you know, as quick as it could. But when I try and tell them, you know, you do need to lift weights, they don't listen. What's your view on that? Um, I think a lot of women are sort of fed lies by their female fitness with their magazines saying, you know, go and run. And running is absolutely great and I'm not taking anything away from that. Um, you know, it's good for your cardiovascular fitness. Um, you know, it's going to help you to lose body fat, you know, as an initial exercise routine because you're increasing your output and if your input's staying the same, you will lose weight. What it's not doing is putting the muscle under any tension, you're not contracting the muscle while you're running, so therefore the muscle's not going to grow, which means you're not going to tone. So what you're going to be left with is what I call skinny fat, which is where you're basically slim, but you're not toned. Um, in order to tone a muscle, you need to tear that muscle, which means you need to lift weight, and you need to contract that muscle, which again means you need to lift weight. I'm not talking massive, you know, 50 kilogram weights like bodybuilders are lifting. I'm just talking, you know, medium sized weights that are a little bit of a challenge for you so you can actually tone up, otherwise you're just never going to achieve the look that you want. Questions from guys and girls wanting to know how do I become a personal trainer? So what would your advice be to them? Um, well obviously you have to go through the, the sort of the courses and you have to find a course that's sort of recognised. I would choose one of the main courses like the YMCA or Premier because they're known nationwide and internationally. Um, and you know, the, the fair amount of money, so it's got to be something you really want to do. So the job is something that you love doing. Um, and then to be honest, because I've got personal trainers who work for me at Crunch Gym, um, the easiest way to get a client base is to actually work in the gym as a gym instructor. If you freelance and just try and find people off the street advertising magazines, it's very, very hard for you to, to build up enough of a client base to make a living from it. So if you do a few hours, even voluntary hours in the gym, you've got a database of maybe a thousand members that the gym has that they'll see you working there every day and you can get chatting to and that's the easiest way to pick up clients by writing programs for these people and they see that you know what you're talking about and that they've pushed themselves slightly harder than perhaps they would they a lot often will then ask you know oh, do you do personal training and you can pick up a lot of clients that way so you know once you've got your kind of uh, foot in the door with the gym that's the easiest way to to make yourself known and, and to bring in a client base. But on top of that, you've always got to promote yourself. So things like leaflet drops and the social media is all a good way to publicize yourself. And if you've got any kind of experience or um, you've, you've won anything in any sport, that will always make you stand out, perhaps over another personal trainer in the same gym.